from the vault. High atop the pastoral center of the Diocese of Camden, you're listening to Talking Catholic. Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of Talking Catholic. I'm Jen Morrow and with me is Mike Walsh. I am so excited to not see anybody in the diocese for a while. <laughs> no. we, we, uh, last night we had, our, uh, we had our final deanery meeting, deanery five meeting of Bishop Williams's uh, uh, walk around the diocese. He is now, matter of fact, uh, someone came up to me and said, uh, so he's done with his welcome. So he's no longer uh, like new to the diocese, right? So that's right. He's now met everybody that uh, he should meet and everyone who came and met him and says, and they said, so does that mean we have we can stop treating him like as, a, as somebody new? I said, yes, be as mean as you'd like. Oh, geez. But, uh, you said that? <laughs> yeah, sure. Of course you did. Um, and uh, no, it was nice. He, We were down in Avalon. It was a great trip. Mm-hmm. Uh, very late evening for both of us since we both uh, drove down there. You amazingly got lost on the island. I, I don't know how uh, one no, gets lost on an island. I but didn't you get got... lost on the island. I got less lost leaving the island. It was like, what, like 8, 30, 45, 9, whatever. And I, I drove yeah. off the island and just promptly went right and then realized, where's the parkway? <laughs> and then I was like, why am I on Route 9? And I had just told you, I think like 10 minutes before this happened, how I, I do not see well at night. So then I put my ways on because I thought I was going to be all smart. Mm. And anyway, long story short, I ended up taking only back roads all the way from Avalon back to the Camden area. And it took like an hour and 45 minutes. And... There were deer everywhere, and I was like, how does one get lost? There should be only one way on and one way off an island. (laughs) Why is this happening? And then I laughed because it's so me. Yeah, that's very true. The uh, <laughs> matter of fact, she's already screwed up next podcast by uh, calling somebody's name wrong and something we pre-recorded. So, I, your commitment to to these things that have made you so beloved around the diocese, I, I truly appreciate. Oh, I mean, I've already heard lots of feedback from the tugboat situation <laughs> where I looked at our guest and promptly didn't really know what a tugboat <laughs> operator was. Apparently, so that one I won't live down for a while as uh, well. Never change. That's nope. that's what I say. Never change. But, um, <laughs> But I, I tell you, we did have a, a, this has been a great experience for Bishop Williams, certainly, but actually for you and I, because because we're so often stuck in our offices, yep. we don't actually get to go out around the diocese very often. And this has forced me to go out where I did get to press the flesh and meet a whole bunch of people. And amazingly, and this still shocks me every single time it happens, somebody comes up and says, I love the podcast. Can I get a selfie with you guys? Yeah. And it, it's, I, I, I'm stunned each and every time. So I had two people in the last two weeks do that. And it was so sweet. And you actually remember their names. I did because I asked them to send the photos because like I was tickled pink too, to be honest. I was like, sweet, somebody's listening to us. And also <laughs> they want to have their picture. And I was excited because I want to have a picture. I'm going to hang them in my office. Oh, yeah, I know. So thank you. I'm going to give a shout out to Colleen from Deanery 3, who was over the moon. And I'll be honest with you, you made my night that night. It had been kind of a rough day. And mm. at the end of the night, you made my night. So thank you for, for asking to say hello and have a selfie with us and then at uh deanery five we met helen and her son nicholas who took a picture with us as well and nicholas yeah. had served in as an altar server in the deanery five mass yeah so um colleen and 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 helen thank you both so much for being listeners and thank you for saying hello yeah absolutely that was that was extremely sweet we really do appreciate hearing that you know we are very humble about the podcast uh, you know we never did it to uh, gain any pseudo celebrity status or anything like that but knowing that people are out there listening and enjoying it and you know we 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 can't tell if people think we're funny or annoying so it's nice to hear people think that apparently we're at the very least not lame i guess yeah i heard we were funny from two people i was like oh i don't want that to go to our heads yeah i also (laughs) somebody somebody actually called me i was like hey mike you know all your co-hosts are women I was like, yeah. I was like, have you met? How much more testosterone do you need on a podcast? <laughs> I have more than enough uh, angry man vibe. That angry I, don't, man I don't need vibe. any more. And the problem is, is Mike Bress, <laughs> grumpy who, old man, exactly. Mike Bress, who is our other co-host, mm-hmm. and I won't, I won't do a podcast with him because our voices are almost identical. No one would know who we're talking. Oh, that's true. Well, yeah. they would know because you're always like wah wah, and Bress is like all woo. Oh, that is true. <laughs> he's the he, he, he's, he's got a lot of woo. He does. I, I avoid woo. Yeah. I want no parts of woo. <laughs> anyway. I am, I am woo deficient. Woo deficient. Maybe they have a vitamin for the vitamin W. <laughs> <laughs> 
I could go for that. Yeah, you like that, it? I'll take some. I, I enjoy a good vitamin from time to time. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And you know what? For all of you pharmaceutical folks, uh, go make me a woo pill. <laughs> please. <laughs> but Please you know, make him a woo pill. Nothing addicting, please. I, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> At any rate, yeah. we have, uh, you know, it's been a good run. I'm happy to say that the deanery meetings are now over. So if mm-hmm. you haven't had your chance to meet Bishop Williams, you're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way by showing up to a confirmation or a diocesan event. But there will be plenty of them around the diocese. I know the Benefactors Dinner is coming up soon, so many of our uh, major donors will be at that and have an opportunity to sit down and meet with them. Um, we have the Massive Remembrance for Deceased Priests. That's coming up soon. So uh, that's at the cathedral on the afternoon, noon of uh, November 5th. So if you want to come to that, that'll be great. Um, and yeah, a lot of a lot of great things upcoming. Mm-hmm. He's actually going back to, I know uh, he's going back to Minnesota uh, next week, or when you hear this, this week. Mm-hmm. And that's very exciting for him and his family, because they are a tight-knit group, so I'm glad that uh, he's going to get some family time in. Yeah, me too. But uh, otherwise, uh, it'll be a little bit more sedate for the two of us Yay! and our crew that, uh, you know, we'll actually be able to focus on a few other things. But I already know John Kalitz has a ton of work for me to do in the office, so. Really? Usually you're giving John Kalitz the work. Well, this was sort of self-inflicted for both of us. We thought we should do something for Christmas, and now we have this whole Christmas plan that somehow we have to make happen. And I haven't quite figured that out. You yet. know what would help? Mm. A woo vitamin. You know, I could. You know what? That's a good point. I'll see if John's got needs some woo too. Although John doesn't usually need nah, woo. John doesn't need woo. Nah, John is. John's got lots of self woo. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> By the way, if anyone's wondering why we're bringing up woo, there's this thing called strength finders that a lot of um, it helps diocesan personnel. Uh, you know, work with the. It's it's like a operational development kind of thing, and a lot of diocesan folks and uh, teams will work on it. And one of the things in there is woo. And uh, there's like 25 different levels of different elements of personality and stuff like there's that. There's 34. Okay. And I and when I was tested nine years ago, um, it didn't even register because woo is one of the levels. However, fixer, get stuff done, that kind of thing, that 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 I registered very <laughs> highly on. Mine was uh, like achiever. achiever. Achiever was number one. Mm. Yeah. Empathy was up there. <laughs> that didn't appear on my Communication, either. pretty low. <laughs> Checks out. <laughs> checks out, right? Yeah. Totally checks out. <laughs> also, I, uh, I think mispronunciation of that, names. Yeah. Also, pretty pretty low or yeah. pretty high, I guess, depending attention, on how. Attention to detail, which yeah. is surprising for a uh, managing hey, editor. Hey, 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 hey. I'm attention to detail. I you just are. can't speak. That is absolutely true. <laughs> and today we have a very long day. For our listeners today, this is actually the second podcast we're recording, and we have a major event tonight, the last major event that'll... Uh, for the season is the Catholic Charities Annual Dinner down in Atlantic City this evening, and I'm already running on fumes. So, uh, you know. Punchy. I, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm between punchy and whatever other words associate you. Grumpy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, <laughs> I'm going to sing everything. <laughs> it's possible. And I will tell you, the more you sing, the, the anger the I will get. I get. Yes. Uh, yeah, we have Catholic Charities Dinner, like you said, by the time this airs. Um, read about it in the Catholic Star Herald mm-hmm. and check out all our dozens of photos. But also, our diocesan pilgrim, Marian pilgrim, is in Washington, D.C., uh, would have happened. Yes, which I will not be on. So you will we'll not be on either. No, but uh, one of our guests, maybe both of our guests will be there. Oh, yeah. both of them. Well, just nods. Both of our guests will good. be there. Then I expect them to write well, take good photographs, actually make things happen for once. Just oh, don't, stop. Just, oh, no, I mean. Well, I, you know, that's actually a good lead in because i am done talking at this point oh thank goodness and i need some people that have positive things to say I, aside from when they insult should we me. introduce them or should we let them introduce themselves yeah they're both hosts agreed they, yeah at this point they don't need and by the way they're on the podcast this week because they flaked on their own podcast this month <laughs> and i'm calling them out on it all right guys it's all you all right hi everyone it's Lori power here with Pete Sanchez, of course. Hey, Co-host. here comes here comes the woo. Oh, yes. Okay, wait, hold on. <laughs> you said it over and over and over again. I didn't explain to people what woo is or what it means. Woo is the ability to win others over for those who are listening. And apparently, I didn't know that you lacked that completely, Michael. I actually didn't know that's what it stood for. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know it was an acronym. <laughs> I didn't either. This whole I didn't time. know either. <laughs> well, Lori, that's. Actually, it is not one of my strengths, but teaching is. So I had to jump in and say, hey, for people who are like, what are they talking about? Huh. There you go. I never bothered to learn it because <laughs> I didn't have it. Not well. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We're You're like right. in the 
classroom of Lori Power. I, I, I was, I I was <laughs> totally not expecting Lori to be to dropping knowledge like that. Thank you, Lori. Not like that. You know what one of my strengths is, Mike? A learner. So I keep learning, oh. and then I want to share it with That others. was not going to be the one I was going to volunteer. <laughs> What do you think they should be or would be? Annoying. But oh! Annoying. <laughs> All of a sudden. Mike like has decided he's my enemy. Come on friend now. of me. Yeah, yeah, oh, I'm, friend I'm, of me? I'm putting oh, you okay. into... Uh, uh, it's Donna. I'm, well, I'm putting her into Donna Atab in a Brit because my frenemies are useful enemies and I, oh. I've decided that Lori is a useful enemy. So is it kind of like uh, Seinfeld and Newman? <laughs> Newman. Lori. I would never... <laughs> Oh, actually, now, now, now that Jenna said that, it does kind of make sense. No, I'll well, be honest with you. I am a little bummed. Why? I thought you were going to do the traditional intro. Oh, sorry. Can this you is it? not talking oh, I, I realize that. <laughs> but could you do the... I, I okay. love... I always right, enjoy it when... Do it. Lori, do the, is, do the appropriate intro. Okay. This is Lori Powered. Uh, what's my title now? Pastoral Associate for Lifelong Faith Formation at Christ the Redeemer. And I'm here today with Peter Sanchez, reporter for the Catholic Star Herald. And we're going to talk about saints because, as Pope Francis reminds us, to become a saint is a vocation for everyone. That's as far as I get into their podcast every single month. Oh, thanks, Mike. <laughs> I know, once I start talking, click. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard anymore. about the saints, Mike. The, well, that's, oh. the, that's the beauty is because we're actually, we had you on, not just because you guys flaked on your episode this <laughs> month, but also because uh, we wanted to do, this as a preview to the All Saints, uh, the Feast of All Saints. Yes. Which is apparently, you know, I get to wrap up my entire year in one day. Is that, isn't it all the saints? <laughs> Wait, that's, that, that's I wish I had a cricket noise. I wish I had a cricket noise. I'm so, yeah. No. What is, I get to know all the saints, saints day. all year. Okay. Oh, yeah. You want to take oh, it? Yeah. All Saints Day is a day to, uh, for all of us to pray for those known and unknown saints in the Catholic Church. Wait, 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 wait. All Saints Day is for us to pray for them? Yeah, for known and unknown. <laughs> to honor like them. That honor part. them. Might be the, I like yeah. the unknown part. You don't have them. to pray for them because they're saints. Well, but so, I, we're pr- have them we're pray asking for them. us. Okay, there we go. Asking yeah. them to pray well, for I, us. I don't know. I, I'd like, I don't know. That is the, usually when we, yeah, we say we pray to saints, but we don't really. We ask them to pray for us. Right. People yeah. always say, you know, Catholics pray to saints. Well, that's just the way, the terminology we use. So, but so now we're we asking are, them to pray for us. So we are, we are, on all saints that we are praying for, we are, wait, hold on, hold on, let me get this straight. We are praying for their benefit, both for the known and unknown saints? No, because if they're in heaven, there's nothing more they could possibly benefit from oh, our so, prayers. So, okay, I, this is a legitimate <laughs> but we're question on my part. For their intercession, right? Hold on, this is actually okay. So, I actually, in that description that you originally gave, I was legitimately confused. Okay, I apologize. Which, I screwed it up. No, no, it no, you didn't. Minute. It you was didn't. the no, preposition. I no, think. no, 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 no. It wasn't that. It wasn't that. It was when you said known and unknown. And my yeah. one, my wonderment was: does that mean we are praying for saints that are currently on the earth? Who have not been canonized or anything like that, but are living the life of oh, saints present here, Good. or even our maybe our loved ones that we don't mm. know they're in heaven. Um, oh, there you go. So that, that might fall if too. we're going to also talk about All Souls Day. So I, I do want to talk about All Souls Day because <laughs> okay. they are back to back feast days, yes. right? Uh, one is on November first is All Saints Day, of and course. the other one is November second. Okay, is All Souls Day. Yeah. Wait, wait. Then what's October thirty first? Oh. All Hallows Eve. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I is just Jen started. punchy too? Yes. Oh my goodness! Yes, she is. <laughs> I would say, is... can we say grunchy, grumpy, and punchy? Oh, Ooh, like Jen's not grumpy. Not well, like, today. Oh, Yesterday might. I was, but it's the day is early. We'll see what happens. by <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, so okay, so so I what, think so, this is going to be a great episode, Mike. It is. I feel bad for the <laughs> listeners, but it's, I've already learned uh, yeah, some personal stuff. I wouldn't, <laughs> exactly. I really was surprising. Um, okay, so let's get back to All Souls first. Oh, no, uh, I'm sorry. Let's no, go back All to All Saints, Saints first. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so on the day of All Saints, aside from the fact that the diocese is closed and I actually get a day off, um, although my son's school is not, and so I still have to drive him in at 7 a.m. They're not off? No, they're not. It surprised oh, me. I know. Good. I hope they're having masks. As an alumnus, you should uh, really you know, should write over there. You should send all comments to... Uh, <laughs> me? No, no, no I should... Michael Chambers at Paul, Paul <laughs> oh, 6 <my>. High School. <laughs> <laughs> work. Feel free to... Feel free to let... No, as long as they have masks for them, I'd be behind that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they do, because okay, it's First good. Friday on top of it. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> aside from the fact that I have off and we'll be sleeping... How you have sh- to go to mass, Michael. It is a solemnity and a holy day of obligation. Yes. 
Okay, I just want to point out, I did know that and just realized that I had forgotten it. Oh, good. Okay. All right. There's probably an evening mass somewhere, so you can still sleep in. Uh, oh, on, on, on All Saints, Saints Day? Day. Or the I, vigil, right? Or would there be a vigil? But who goes to mass on Halloween? Not too That's many right. people. I will be eating candy, Peter. <laughs> well, maybe you'll get candy from the, I don't know. Jesus? She, hey, the Eucharist is so much oh. more sustaining than... Snickers and even though that's delicious too. Oh, that you're absolutely right. Candy and, corn and low calorie, mm. as opposed to candy. The um, no, I I'd I like to edit that out. <laughs> keeping it in. These people at this point, these listeners now. Anyway, um, all saints. No, no. So I completely forgot it was a holy day of obligation. Indeed. I apologize for that. I know right. it's difficult because so many of them have been made not holy days of obligation. Yeah, a lot but of them have been yeah. transferred. This one right. is still, yes, going yeah. strong. So how should we celebrate on All Saints Day? Well, it is a solemnity, which mm. means it is the highest level of uh, celebration in the church. Yeah. So you want to find a parish that's going all out. It has their choir coming in. It's going to preach a full homily. Then you need to bake something because it's a feast day. So you get a feast. Wait, is that true? Hold on. Yes. Looking at you, Father Ox, I'll be there. And now, Mike, what time should we all be over for baked goods? I know, right? Well, I, I need a proper All Saints baked good to... Hey. to oh, wait. Oh. Funny you should say that, Michael. Oh. Um, <laughs> see, I actually just picked up a book. Spoiler alert. So the next talk... Well, I don't want to spoil what we're doing our next Talking okay. Saints on. But this is kind of related to it. So I picked up a book by uh, Father Leo Pedelingung, who was... Uh, he's a, a Catholic chef. He's a, he's a priest. He's a baker. And the book is called Dining with the Saints. And so it has for a lot of the feast days, it's got uh, different recipes you can make. And I know, Michael, you are a baker extraordinaire. I am. And... So for All Saints Day, Jen, I, can you helpfully pronounce this German word again? Oh, yes. This I is All try. Saints yep. Cake, and it talks about, what, how do you pronounce that? So it's called Alles Heiligen Streutzel. 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 Okay. Yep. So that means Alles is all in German. Heiligen is holy. So it's all holy, and Streutzel, or Streutzel, however you want to pronounce it, is a cake. Alligen, Aller Heiligen Streutzel. Mm. Okay. Thank you. I like seeing. Well, I'm tired. I was going to make a pronunciation joke, but you know what? Let's go past it. Do you well, speak German? No, I barely speak English. Yeah. Uh, well, that actually was correct. Heiligen <laughs> is holy. Alles, all. Alles Heiligen. Okay. Very well, that's nice. nice. I don't know why we're so aggressive right now. But oh, <laughs> uh, well, here, here's another. Here's another tidbit I just learned from this book. Okay. According to Pope Urban the Fourth. This holy day, All Saints Day, is also to compensate for any negligence in celebrating the saints' feasts from the previous year. Oh, So if you forgot right. anybody, you can... Oh, that is made for me. Can I, <laughs> yeah, see, me can too. I see that book, please? <laughs> sure. I'm, I'm just While you guys are talking, I'm just going to memorize how to make this thing. No, are you make take it? a screenshot. No, it's yeah, it's it's a braided bread. Okay, just to, to kind be clear, of, you yeah, cannot what? take a screenshot of a book. I know I know we're all very technological. However, I'm going to take a photograph of it. <laughs> Well, I meant, I, yeah, I'm sorry. Wait, so, so what is take it? A photo. It's a it's a braided bread. Okay. And if when Mike gives it back to me, I am very good. By the way, I just want to point out, I am very good at braiding. Or if we were in Britain right now, plaiting. Oh, plat- I know how to, I know how to okay. plait. I'm very good. I I love making challah bread, oh. just because oh. I get to braid it. I was um, about to say challah, but uh, no. is it sweet? The bread? Uh, it doesn't look to be. It looks to be. Well, no, um, actually, I think it is a sweet bread because it's got of... it's got sugar in it. It's got raisins in it. It's got toasted walnuts. Uh, actually, okay. got quite a bit of sugar in it. Um, so yeah, yeah. So I would say it's uh, butters in it. So it's it is a, as it's called an enriched dough. This mm-hmm. is what this currently has. It's an enriched dough, so which means it's of... going to take a longer proofing stage. But that's okay because I'm patient. Well, isn't that interesting though? Because that mimics our own lives. Like we're all in our own proofing stage now. And we'll all rise to heaven. Oh, I like and that. And where we can that savor, we can have the sweetness of heaven. I like that. Yeah. We all are. You know, we're, we all stage. have the raisins and the, <laughs> we're all the come. Yeah, now I'm getting a little bit too much. But I've, I did like that. I literally had to turn my head away. <laughs> while you saying man. that. I actually like that very much. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it just, yeah. So it kind let's of, talk um, about... Why we have this feast day? We don't and want to talk about from. the question in this book. Well, now, now I'm just now I'm just flipping through the pages. It's really cool. Ooh, book. what yeah. was the question? I can't say it. Oh, the que- There was a question. Yeah, here. Me... This thing. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. If you were a saint. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. This is the. Okay, I cannot wait because I've I've had this, I've asked this question of Carrie Janice, our other 
uh, co-host. Oh, yeah? And um, she was wrong when she answered it. What? Uh, <laughs> I don't think it could be wrong. Just read the question first. Okay. If you were a saint, what would you be a patron saint of? Once you have your answer, become a saint for that cause. Aww. That not that lovely? So, well, what do you think? So huggy. Um, children. So educating children or just You want to be the patron saint of children? Nice. Yeah, like St. Nick. No. <laughs> Don't Very even, nice. don't even. So no, my kids asked me this. And then I said, well, what do you think? And they said, kids, my Aww. students. I shouldn't say, my students. I always say kids and people say, what? You know, you know. <laughs> so well, nowadays yeah. it's a little confusing, yeah. but yeah, all right. So the... how sweet. I'm like, all right, I'll go with that. That's really nice. And yeah. they say that answer too. They did too, yes. Pete? Gosh, I don't know how I can top that. I was thinking. <laughs> I don't think you have to top it. It's well, about you. Yeah, I just think kind of, I mean, can I say that people are already a patron saint of? No. Like, can I copy? Yes. Like, oh, sure. yeah, well, yeah. I'd love yeah. to be just a patron saint of the written word or, mm. you know, just kind of uh, communication, just mm-hmm. getting the gospel out through my life, my, my writing. I, I like disagree. That. Who is the patron of communications, Michael? Do you know? I think we have them up here somewhere, as a matter of fact. Uh, Francis de Sales? Yeah, oh, there's yeah. one Excellent. of them. There's, there's actually, a, the reason I say I think Pete's wrong is because um, number one we have a litany of of communication saints, yeah. Saint Luke, you know, there's a mm. ton of them. Uh, Saint Teresa of Avila, mm. is, Francis, I think she falls in there. Yeah. Saint Francis, whatever her name was. Uh, she, uh, yeah. um, Saint Claire, I think is one. Saint Philip Neri. Yeah. So we got a ton. So do I you actually, know why Saint Claire is one of the patrons of communications. I actually I do. I read up on her, but I, for the life of me, I cannot remember right now. Apparently, she was sick in bed. And she could not make it to mass, and this upset her very much. So Jesus projected the mass on the wall across from her, so he she could see what was going on. So it's wow. like she had TV before there was TV. <laughs> wow! I knew that story. So I want to. I only know because one of my confirmandi chose her, and that was the only story that they could come up with. About Get Saint out. Claire. <laughs> That's actually kind of cool. It is cool. Yeah. That is extremely cool. Yep. Yeah. She was the John Kalitz of, of. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. Somebody tell John Kalitz that. Yeah. The uh, no, no. Pete, the reason I was thinking is yes. You, yeah, that is your vocation. Certainly is communications. But you know, in your, from your perspective, like you do it differently than everybody else, and you have completely different perspectives. So I don't know if it's as generic as. Can, I think. I think the yeah. fact that you bring there's, there's something else to it. I think you're. I think you're selling yourself short by being the patron saint of communicators. I think you're. Uh, I think there's there's an element of that that you might be missing because you, you go Mark. deeper than that. No, I, I, no, I appreciate the challenge. I'm. I'm I. Yeah. Yeah. I, I need to think about that more. Yeah. And don't get, get don't, to don't get me wrong. I thought Lori was wrong too, but oh, okay. that's that's fine as well. So Jen. <laughs> oh, I, I I'm I'm pretty sure that I am the patron saint of procrastinators. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Own it. Yeah. Wait, are you helping people to procrastinate more or helping them procrastinate less? Uh, I would like to Once be you less. become saintly. Yes. I okay. would like to for people to pray for the intercession to be less procrastinate I like that. <laughs> you know what? That's a good one. And you? Mm. Oh, please, I knew what mine was the day I was born. Okay. Patron saint of sarcasm. Yes. <laughs> I knew you were going to say I was hoping Mark. you were going to say yep, that. I'm going to have so to argue with, with you on that one, oh, no. Mike. No, Only because I don't right think on. you can be a patron saint. Wait, are you going to help people become less sarcastic? Well, first of all, actually, that's a good don't, question. First of all, don't project your negative vibes on <laughs> my patronage. That assumes that sarcasm is a bad thing. I well, consider sarcasm to hold on. You're I not going to like my comment, but okay. okay, okay. Well, so I said everybody else is wrong. You can say I'm wrong. Um, I think that sarcasm actually is useful, and it's a it's a good tool for communicating in a alternative fashion. So, and because there are some people who. You know, we so we all respond to things differently, right? If there's one thing I absolutely do not respond to, it is from people who are too. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, pious. Piety does not work on me. Sarcasm, on the other hand, works great. And if someone inter, you know, sort of interlaces sarcasm as they're explaining, you know, very real and true elements of our faith. That actually does resonate with me. So, you know, well, comedy, 
sarcasm. Maybe you could get away with it, but here's my issue. So okay. I used to be rather sarcastic, and I realized two things. Wait, one, what? what? You? Oh, yeah, hold on. So, wait, Lauren, no. so one, wait, hold on. Wait. One is kids, children do not understand sarcasm. Like it, do, it doesn't, they can't process it. Well, that's good, because I don't want to So that means like, okay, I can't, it doesn't work. <laughs> so right, for you, if you're dealing with adults, you're fine. Like, were you sarcastic with your son when he was little? He wouldn't have known what you were talking about. Obviously, you haven't spoken to my son or something like that. <laughs> yeah. That's all he talks about. Yeah. <laughs> now, probably. But I also, probably. I would like to say that because I understand sarcasm, I can communicate with my son oh, very well. <laughs> yes, whereas other people get put off by him. I'm like, I know what he's going for there. Okay. Yeah. But we have. Then had- I also heard hmm. that, like, in exorcisms, they have heard that devils are generally demons are sarcastic. So I was like, mm, I guess I want to avoid that. I'd like to be direct and, and <laughs> speak so, only the truth. Whoa. So, <laughs> so that means that uh, as someone who appreciates sarcasm, I am there to challenge the devil. Oh, I not hope to be so. not to be usurped by him, but because <laughs> I already have that in him, and his sarcasm oh, won't work can, on me. Oh. No, but I think Mike, I think Mike, what he's talking about, I think that's fascinating because I think for us to get holy, we need to kind of meet people where they are and communicate the faith to them. And I appreciate you saying that, Mike, Mm -hmm. because I've never thought about that. Like somebody is sarcastic, you know, how, and you talked about how you respond when others are sarcastic. So maybe you need just a sarcastic faith. I, or something I, like that. If you know like, the, the priest I'm friendly with, they would agree with you. Yeah, I mean, because that, that opens the door to your heart or something, you know, for lack of a better term. Yeah, because I don't have one of those, but it does open my mind, and I appreciate that. No, but it's true, and I'm and that's actually that was actually a great question yeah, to ask. I'm, I'm happy that that was in there. That's good. Hackneyed as it was. It was a nice one. Michael, you have a heart. Come on. <laughs> it's there. It's there. I just buried it as best I can. So going back to All Saints. Yes. Beyond the cooking. <laughs> beyond the going to Mass. Yes. Those would be the two uh, most important things, probably. They probably are. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Except 100% you're correct on that. Although it does beg the question, you know, uh, something of a more global perspective. Feast days. Because mm. you mentioned this earlier. You know, a feast day is quite literally a day for feasting. Correct. Which I do yep. think we do a poor job at. Yes. If it's not... St. Patrick's Day, which is not a feast day in the Catholic Church any longer. It's, um, I think it's a Memorial Day. Exactly. Though, uh, the one that comes right after it on the 19th. On uh, my birthday? St. Joseph. Oh, wait, that's St. Joseph. After that's still considered a feast day. Of course, solemnity. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's just solemnity. Solemnity. Yes, yeah. he's yeah. still a solemnity. Yep. Yeah. So, and that, it, and that has some of the best feasting. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. highly recommend it. Yeah, the St. Joseph's cakes alone is worthwhile. <laughs> but, uh, and it usually ends in the middle of Lent. So, it's like, mm. I need that. I need that day. Um, but yeah, I mean, feast days really did start out like that, right? Because you know, back in the day, you know, you you well the prob- fasted most right. of the year. The problem is we don't fast, right? <laughs> so <laughs> nobody understands the, the way we should. Oh, so right. we don't appreciate oh, feast point. days. Well, I just yes. found out recently yeah. that Advent used to be as long as Lent, and it had just as much uh, fasting involved really? as Lent did. Yeah, and even to this day, you really are supposed to. Well, you're not. You don't have to. But there are those who will fast on Fridays in Advent. And there are still those who fast on every Friday of the year. Yes. But, now, when uh, you say, I guess, yeah, the fasting would be, or what is the uh, uh, abstention, too? Right. That's the other one. Mm-hmm. The ab- yeah. Abstinence. Sorry. Abst- I don't even yes. know if abstention is a word. Okay, there's only one person on this podcast known for mis- uh, mispronouncing things, Pete. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, Whoa, I, got I my just stick, stepped on okay? my... Well, he's not mispronouncing. He's making up a whole cloth. A so. neologism, if you would. Oh. All right. <laughs> All right, Mr. Word of the Day. <laughs> so, yes, I do know people who both never eat meat on Friday all year. Yep. Um, and then those that are fasting, like bread and water fasting on Fridays. Yeah. So the so, whole year. Yeah. Um, I guess it depends on... Yeah, some yeah. of them... Would, would be that intense if they're able to. Yeah. You know, you said the word solemnity a few times. <laughs> Can you, I've always been a little confused. Can you explain sure. what a solemnity is? So there are levels of celebration in the church. So specifically for masses, you would see different levels. And Mike, I was very impressed. He even mentioned one of them, that St. Patrick's is, is only a memorial now? That's right. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so your highest would be solemnity. So that would be All Saints Day, Christmas, Easter... Corpus Christi. There's more than I can probably Immaculate say. Conception. Immaculate yeah, conception. conception. Yeah. So all the big days, and then some of the saints too. Mm-hmm. Saint Joseph, because mm-hmm. he's so important. Um, and then you would have a feast, which is slightly lower. So I guess with solemnity, it's like you cannot, you shouldn't be fasting that day. <laughs> so yes. people who are very into fasting, you'd be like, no, it's a, it's a solemnity. You got to eat. Actually, I didn't know that when I was younger and more 
into fasting and someone's like no you gotta eat it's it was like the feast of the or solemnity of the sacred heart he's mm-hmm. like no fasting today that's right <laughs> so there you go okay um then feast day and then you would have a memorial or an optional memorial so feast you have to celebrate so if the priest is looking at their ordo with all the if it's a feast he would have to celebrate the feast of that saint um memorial i think that is also the case and then optional is they can choose to either do the mass of the day or that so saint. i never knew that somebody had told me that a solemnity is because it falls on a sunday like if well, a feast all day falls Sundays on a Sunday. are considered solemnities yeah. too. That's why you're not allowed yeah. to fast on a Sunday, right? Which is but rough. there are also days that don't fall on Sunday that would all, always, always be solemnities. Solemnity. Oh, mm-hmm. all right, good to know. See, As an you. eater, I know when all the solemnities are because <laughs> I I try to use the Catholic Church I, I, as a legal scholar. <laughs> I try to use huh. the Catholic Church as loopholes to make sure I eat and heartily. <laughs> Well, uh, I just, well, I just had you're feasting for, properly. Well, that's right. right. I'm honoring God by doing what He asked. <laughs> I just had talking about feasting. Uh, we recently had St. John Paul II's feast day. Yeah. On uh, mm. October 21st. Did you have pierogies? 22nd. 22nd. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I had Polish pancakes. Nice. nice. It was delicious. I bought them from somewhere, but I, if I had more time, if I thought about it more, I would have made them. Mm. But um, I should do more for my feast day, St. Pete, St. Peter. It's uh, sometimes I feel bad for these saints because there are saints that have two, like St. Yeah. Peter and Paul are the same day. Sometimes I feel like, wait a minute, why don't we get my own? But I mean, no. they probably maybe they're in I heaven. I don't think so. they mind. No. So <laughs> what about what? But your... Paul gets another day because we celebrate conversion of St. Paul. That's right. So See, that's not fair for St. Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, is there like the rock? Well, you know, Peter, he denied or... Christ and this is what he gets. He has to share a feast day. That must be it. No, <laughs> I, well, there is the, the, the feast day of the chair of St. Peter. There you That's go. That's right there. Thank you. You're you know, remembering. Well done, Michael. The papacy. I happened to be in the Vatican on the day of, the, of his feast day. And the chair of St. Peter was had must have, there been, must have been a thousand candles surrounding Whoa. it and on it. Because the, the chair of St. Peter is in the Vatican, elevated. It's kind of cool to look at and weird at the same time. Uh, but I just happened to be there on that day. And it was, it was truly amazing. Do uh, they celebrate it as a solemnity there? I did not ask. Uh, okay. My they assumption might. is my assumption is considering everything they did for it. My assumption was they they did probably, but I, I because if don't know the it's, answer. if it's just a feast day, if you are like the, a church named for that saint, you mm. can actually bump it up to solemnity level celebration. Sweet, really? yes. <laughs> I hope all of our local parishes are listening I to this. They are, I'm sure they know that already. Our priests know these things. Yeah. I, <laughs> Speaking of St. Paul, though, you know, getting back to St. Paul, I love St. Paul. Sorry, I wasn't trying to give him short shrift over St. Peter. Um, but no, one of the things that they, um, I love it. It's it's through um, what he says. I think it's it's Colossians. And it's a saint quote. I don't know if you know this, Lori. Uh, I do not, I'm trying to look for the Catholic, but basically I'm looking for the Catholic translation. But something to the effect of having give thanks to God who's made you worthy to share the lot of the saints. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to remember, especially now. And we we think about, we pray for these holy women and men always. You know, like I love too, it's (laughs) All Saints Day is almost like a reparation for Oh no, we missed all these (laughs) other saints. So now we can (laughs) pray for them. But then also we realize we don't need to do anything to qualify. We're already qualified. We just have to accept it, pick up what we know we need. And St. Paul, God bless him, that's what he realized. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're all worthy to share their lot in heaven. And we just have to remember that. And again, what St. John Paul II said, be not afraid. That's right. No, Jesus no. makes us worthy, so that's how we get in. And what is it to be <laughs> to be a saint? Is not a it's not a privilege for the few, but a vocation for everyone. Yeah. So I want to totally um, dovetail off of that because Father Ed Ed Cola, who is our, one of our retired priests of of the diocese, he he tends to write about all souls, all saints every year, and he has done so this year. Uh, it'll be in the November 1st issue of the Catholic Star Herald. But there's something that he wrote that I really loved, and it kind of goes right with what you're saying, uh, Pete. And he, and he talks about how, you know, all these homilies are, are preached at the Mass of All Saints, and, you know, we're listening about all of the admiration and, you know, imitation of, of you know, we're kind of called to be that. And he says it's very easy to sit in the pews and say, where does that leave me? How can I ever hope to compete with such giants, 
right? And he says, the good news is we don't have to compete with them, nor does the Lord expect us to even or even want us to. All we need to do is fulfill the duties of our station in life, whatever it may be, to the best of our ability. Amen. <laughs> All right? I thought mm. that was just, like, that hit me yeah. hard. Mm. It's like, do the best we can, the vocation of that, like you were saying, Lauren. Yeah, that is true. And uh, which edition of the paper will that appear in? November 1st, but it'll nice. be online before that. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So that was a spoiler? Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> That's awesome. And then we remember, too, this this year is the first year we can pray for new saints on World Mission Sunday that happened recently. Pope Francis uh, created new saints, an That's Italian awesome. missionary, uh, Franciscan friars who are martyrs in Syria, a Canadian-born uh, woman who started the Little Sisters of the Holy Family, uh, an Italian nun who founded the Oblates of the Holy Spirit. So it's really wonderful to see there's always these new men and women that we can learn about and we can like uh, bless you Carlo Cooties, mm-hmm. you know, or I guess mm-hmm. who, will, who will soon be a saint. I don't think the date has been picked. I think the expectation is it's going to be in the new year. Is, new year? Is what That's I heard. exciting. That the, the rumor, the Vatican rumor mill says that it's going to be uh, related to the Jubilee year in some way. And our diocese just dedicated Bishop Sullivan to just as mm-hmm. dedicated a new center. He did. Yeah. In Cherry the Hill. Blessed so, Cooties Center. And uh, were you two there? You, Mike I was. was. It's a retreat center, and it's it's located on the grounds of uh, Camden Catholic High School. But it, it's it's for youth, but it's also for adults or marriage retreats. Wow. It's a beautiful facility. Yeah, I've heard it. You, yeah, yeah, you saw it, right? Yeah, it really is nice. It's uh, great rooms, uh, wonderful dining area, great play areas for uh, meetings and reflection, and a really nice chapel. Mm-hmm. And Tons of parking because it's on the campus of Catholic, uh, Camden Catholic. Good so, to yeah. know. Yeah. yeah I, because mm-hmm. um, have you all talked about the DMI on here yet? No, you're like we, no. <laughs> we're, we're waiting <laughs> the for disciple the, maker index. Yeah, we're waiting for the results to happen before that. <laughs> well, we have gotten access to our results to okay, parishes, mm-hmm. and one of them was like seventy percent of our parishioners have never been on retreat. And Father was just saying, oh, we should do something at the new Carlo Aquino oh. Center. I was like, oh, that would be a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it would be a good idea. How big is it? How many people could we take? Uh, it's pretty large. I mean, there's a ton of – I actually don't know what the max is, but I'm okay. guessing about 20 That's people. That's pretty good. There's, okay. two, there's two floors of rooms. Nice. And the the dining hall had – I would say 20 to 30 people is my Excellent. guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a, it's a, good, it's a good space. Now, does that mean that we have to go on retreats if we don't want to? <sighs> no, but it's good for your heart and your soul, Michael. Although you did give me the only <laughs> retreat I'd ever want to go on. Which one? A silent retreat. Oh. I Ever since you came back from a silent retreat, I've been that, that's actually been in the Guess back of my what, mind. Guess what, Mike? The What's sisters that? down the shore in our own diocese have a silent retreat coming up. Which is private awesome. retreat. The IHM sisters, I'm going to go. In the one that's so hard. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. That's December. a great facility, too. December. Come on down, Mike. Of December. I can will not wear, talk to you while you're there. I'll be in I'll be in Tulsa in December. <laughs> oh, yeah. there's I think there's two Catholic options. Charities. There's a directed or just and a there's private. A silent. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't take direction both. well, so silent sounds great. <laughs> How they're, long? They're both silent. It's whether or not you want a director for the. Yeah, it doesn't sound like I don't, want to, I don't. I don't want anyone talking to me. Um, how long do how long are those retreats? Uh, well, it depends. That one is Tuesday to Saturday. Okay, and how would people find out about it if they wanted to partake? Uh, it's I think it's called Villa Maria Retreat mm-hmm. House. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you just look that up in Stone okay. Harbor. Yeah, yeah that's it's great. On and the it website. is a beautiful facility, like yes. really, really, really great space, and oh. in a great area. And you probably you... Uh, were lost around there somewhere. <laughs> no, I was. <laughs> I probably was. And if you want to book the I, blessed, I think Pete and I have both been there. Matter of fact, if you want to book the Blessed Acutus Retreat Center, mm-hmm. you do that through the Buildings and Management uh, Office here at the Diocese of Camden. Oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good luck finding them. Um, <laughs> the, um, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, I don't believe they have woo either, to be honest with you. Um, the uh, That being said, now we've talked a lot about the saints, but I, yes. didn't, I didn't want to give short shrift to the what I consider sort of a pairing mm. of of those two days, which is the Feast of All Souls. Yes. Also a feast day. I don't know if there's a food related to the Feast of All Souls. I don't oh, think maybe, so. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know that we're to the book. supposed to feast on that day. It seems like a more of a penitential day to Does me. It? Okay. I mean, you're praying for the dead, and it's the one day that priests are allowed to celebrate three masses. 
Oh, that's right. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. They're not allowed to celebrate three masses any other Typically, day? Typically, apparently, Sunday, they're not supposed to. Without without permission. Without permission. No kidding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. It's true. There is. There is oh, one for All tell Souls us. Day. Tell it us. says here, okay, so I'll just read from this book, because it's actually interesting. It says, after celebrating the church triumphant in heaven, the church militant on earth turns her thoughts to the church suffering purgatory and prays for the speedy delivery of the poor souls from their painful purification. So traditional king ang- traditions dishes include English soul cake, Italian eggs and purgatory, Italian bones of the dead cookies, Italian fave de morti, beans of the dead, actually they're almond treats, Spanish and Mexican pan de muerto, bread of the dead, Mexican chicken mole, and Swiss dry bones cookies. And then, as an American alternative, I love this. We promote Southern soul food, fried chicken and buttermilk biscuits. <laughs> all right. Okay. That wait, sounds wait, delicious. I can make every single one of those things, and those are all delicious. Wait, mole? Oh, heck yeah. Uh, I love mole. <gasps> yeah. You Mike, can make mole? Can, we bring, can you bring mole in, like. please? Uh, yeah, I have friends who are Mexican, and uh, taught me how to make it. Oh, so, yeah, it's good stuff. It is <sighs> hard to find a good mole. Mm, yeah. Oh, so. man, now I want enchilada moles. Some of the best mole I ever had was in Trenton, like downtown. Wow. Trenton. Oh yeah, and it was almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. If you want, if you want good Mexican food, do not go to a nice Mexican restaurant. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> you need to find a strip mall Mexican restaurant, yeah. and it, that is that is some of the best Mexican food you'll ever have outside of Mexico. Because they're always run mm. by close knit families, and it's like their family recipes, and they're amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, yes. Why do we need to celebrate souls? Because well. I don't know if I would say we're celebrating. Well, we are because that we are because eventually they will be in heaven. But at the moment, they are in purgatory. We believe they are being purified, prepared for heaven. So yeah, yeah we need to pray for them because they cannot pray for themselves. No. So we get we have a day set aside that we, so we don't forget. <laughs> and it's a good time to go to the cemetery and pray for them. Yes. And there's, there's even an, an indulgence attached. Were you going to say that? I was just yes, going to say, go sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, this is, so this is the pray. It's a partial indulgence, and okay. you do this prayer. You say, eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. So you say that, and... And partial- you can say that prayer any day, or any time yeah. you know of someone who died. That's a good prayer to say all the time. Yeah. But it, apparently you can get an adult indulgence for the dead by saying that. Yeah. Excellent. And it just, I, I remember my grandfather always said, you know, before he passed away, he said, all I want when I'm dead is mass is celebrated wow. for me. So you can do that too. You know, you can have somebody. That, that's a good way to pray for the souls in purgatory too. Have a mass said for them. At yes, the best parish. way. Yeah, call them, you know, and it's a, it's an easy process to do if you haven't done that. Um, but it just, yeah, because we, we don't know... I, that's the thing is interesting because saints is known and unknown. So we do not know if our family's in heaven. So just to be safe. That's right. We want to keep all, praying for them. pray for them on yes. both days. Yeah. So yeah, you, you bring up a good point. Because like the first thing I think about is, is purgatory. When you say purgatory, I'm like, well, I want to pray for everybody who's not in purgatory. And then I'm like, wait a minute. I don't know who's there that's and who's true. not there, you know. <laughs> so it's like you're praying for all everybody who's passed. And, yes. and those. And apparently when you pray for the souls in purgatory, once they get to heaven, they will intercede for you. So there you get, there's an added bonus for praying <laughs> for the holy right. souls. Yeah. In yes. grateful affection, I imagine. Yes. Did not know that. Mm-hmm. It is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> for anyone who's wondering, I had to leave the podcast, so I actually have no idea what they're talking about right now. <laughs> he stepped up for like 30 seconds. 30 seconds. So I, unfortunately, I missed the whole reason as to why we, we pray for the we dead. Because uh, yeah. okay. they could be in purgatory. Podcast. You know that. I'm going to listen. Don't worry. I'll find out. So does okay. anybody, I'm curious, I, you know, just make me think now of that song, When the Saints Go Marching In. Does anybody know, I mean, the origins or like mm. what that means? Mm. I don't. I really don't know. No. I might look it up. I don't know either. I sing it with the kids. I guess I should know. <laughs> What, we're, we're doing a you parade of saints. You knew what was, and I... I'm pretty impressed, so I feel like you should know what that one is. You're doing a parade of saints, is that what you're saying? We are, okay. yes. So it's something I used to do in my old parish, and we're bringing it back, because the first graders definitely learn better when they actually, it's something hands-on. So if they dress up as a saint, they'll remember that, I think. So it's, wow. you know, I because I didn't um, grow up Catholic, mm-hmm. so it, it's always interesting that uh, 
uh, working for the church, I love seeing the pictures of the Catholic school kids dressing yes. up as their favorite saints and who they choose. Like there's yeah. always the the classics who you know, yes. but then there's some really obscure ones that make me go have to go look it up. And that's I'm like, I didn't know that. like your Saint Claire and the image on the wall. That's right. That's like, oh, <laughs> that's one of my some of my favorite pictures of of this time of year is the kids dressing up as their favorite saints. Yeah, I was just realizing I did it in first grade, which means they've been doing it for over 30 years at my Catholic elementary school every year. Like, this is great. Great tradition. I remember, yeah, that predates me. I, I didn't know you dressing up. No, I'm sorry. Well, I remember Lori, a mutual friend of ours, was known for her Halloween parties. Yes. And she had a Halloween party with the theme of saints and sinners oh. one time. And another friend of ours dressed up as St. Ezra the Farmer. Nice. It was like, wait a minute. And I had to be educated. Yeah, to look him up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we have a church in our we diocese do, named after Saint Isidore. I know. I think this was before. Oh, okay. It was like this is years ago. It was. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, just it's. What did you? Do, who did you dress up as, Lori? So when? my middle name is Elizabeth. So Saint Elizabeth, cousin of Mary, not Elizabeth of Hungary. She's another popular one. Or Elizabeth Ann Seton. I went with the original Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> How did you dress up as Elizabeth? It, just wearing a veil and like a blue. You know, piece of fabric. Whatever oh. my parents figured out. Exactly. It, it looked cute. Okay. How old were you? <laughs> Six. First okay, grade. So yeah. St. Elizabeth, this is the the cousin of Mary. Correct. Yes. So you didn't have a, like a something like a baby leaping no. out of the womb? Or <laughs> I think that would have been a little much. Too much information for a six-year-old. <laughs> and 30 years ago, that would still be scandalizing. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays, everyone would be like, yeah, sure, that makes sense. Back then, it would be like, what are you doing? Yeah, I, I guess you'd have to explain that to yeah. the kindergartners. There'd be or... much pearl clutching amongst grandmothers if you, if you that one. now i'm just thinking in my head if somebody were to like make that and i don't know my head's going i like it how somebody know. would make that contraption like a little no she could just, baby she like could just carry john the baptist that's true like a that, doll. that would be better but then you got to get married too you should be like a pair exactly yeah, yeah. did you so. ever dress up in school i did saint peter of course mm. and i had the uh, i had a, a fake beard and um obviously um, even though, even though I was St. Joseph in the Christmas play one year and, uh, I could kind of get a little shadow and mm-hmm. I did ask sister, uh, Marita Regina, if I could grow the beard and she said, absolutely not. <laughs> so I didn't do that. No, but I went to St. Peter in second grade and, uh, I remember my mom and my dad made uh, a cardboard keys for me. Nice. So there must be a picture somewhere. Oh, do you, you have to find it. I do. I have to go find it. Oh now. my gosh, we should put those pictures up <laughs> with this podcast. If you find them, yeah. What about look. you, Mike? Did you? Uh, uh, well, not in the not, Archangel. Not as. Uh, <laughs> oh, that'd be great. <laughs> that is exactly who I would have dressed up with if we had that yes. back in the day. But mm-hmm. um, I'm old enough that that predates dressing up in school, other than Darth Vader masks. Um, no, I uh, I did, however, dress up as a saint once. Believe it or not, uh, <gasps> the year my son was born. The, we had a Christmas pageant at my parish, and they asked if Jack would be the Jesus, and they said, well, would you and Jennifer, my wife, be the uh, Mary and Joseph? Wow. So I was dressed as St. Joseph, and at that time, I, I had a full beard and had not yet grown, gone white, and I had contacts. So I very much look like uh, St. Joseph. Do you and have it, pictures of I do actually have pictures <gasps> okay, of that. Okay, oh, yeah, okay. put that on, too. And, <laughs> and I got to tell you, ruggedly handsome. <laughs> Well, St. Joseph would have been. So, of yeah. course. That's right. Rightfully. I, went, I was full carpenter at that point. It was nice. Nice. Yeah, I would have given uh, Jen's husband a run for his money in terms Aww. of uh, handsome, handsome laborer. And see, I am of the camp that St. Joseph was younger. They, like, they always depict him as being very, very old. I disagree. Well, only in the sense that he wasn't 14 like right. Mary was. No, he was but you probably see him like, with gray hair. He looks like a grandfather in a lot of yeah, paintings. Yeah, because nobody knows what to do with yeah. themselves. Don't, don't trust those uh, middle ages <laughs> painters, folks. You know, there's right, Caravaggio's and there's you know. yeah. Michelangelo is wrong. Just kidding. Oh. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right, so that's it. We're gonna get a picture of you and Jennifer and Baby Jack. Mm-hmm. There you go. We're gonna get a picture of uh, Lori as Saint, Saint, Saint Elizabeth. Elizabeth, and we're gonna get a picture of of uh, Pete. And that those pictures are gonna go up with this post. <laughs> and right? well, no, no, then you you need to go to. Uh, Spirit Halloween and go find yourself a saint outfit uh, and make do one do a current do a current do one? a current one yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. if I had any time Mother this Teresa. weekend I'm sure they have a Mother would, Teresa costume mm-hmm. there you go <laughs>
<laughs> the uh, or some, I'm sure they have a nun costume. So uh, go find a saintly nun. A saintly nun. Yeah. We've got a couple of those in the in the saints, correct? Oh, so many. So. <laughs> you know what? That's actually an interesting question. Is there an and I, and I don't mean this as a negative. Is there a are there more clergy and professed uh, that are saints than laity that are saints in your yes. in your research? Oh, absolutely. Like look at who they just canonized. Okay. They're almost entirely all foundresses or founders or what Franciscans, yeah, right? There's a, mission, there's yeah. a missionary, Mission. founder oh, of the consulate of missionaries, yeah. There you go. In Italy. And I think part of that is their people are good about getting them canonized mm. like they follow through they they follow their life they want their founders kind of whereas like lay people will be like are your kids and grandkids gonna try to you know open your cause it's a lot of work yeah it's but, a lot of work it's <laughs> a lot of work even though we're getting there though with blessed carlo and blessed we Pierre are Giorgio that Fasati, is true these is holy true. men and women mm. and i think they're is it blessed chiara yes too? that's yes. another one she was not uh so that is true. So their their local churches probably really took them up as like we're gonna yeah. Put their but it's great. Forward. Yeah. It's great to know that you don't have to. We be... We don't have any saints from the diocese of Camden yet, do we? Yet. No. Yet? All right. No, no. Well, no, I... are we even looking into anybody's life who's died? Who can we look at? <laughs> <laughs> We've had some holy priests like Father Capella. I'd be all about oh, his, yeah. his oh, cause. Father Capella. I wish yeah. Yeah. He, he was him. definitely a, a yeah. saint on earth while he was here, and certainly yeah. a saint in heaven. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've, I'm sure there's a handful, right. uh, you know, uh, some lay saints. There's a couple of people who aren't dead yet that you know <laughs> you think might still have a the... shot of uh, you know making it. You know, once they once they kick the bucket. But um, Mike you know. Walsh, no, that's, I don't need to worry. <laughs> I about believe that. Mike. I believe in you. I, I <laughs> that's nice, Pete. I uh, no, no, that will not be me. But uh, I will, I will always support others wherever I can. And then you know, I do it. You know, for being in the South Jersey area, it is important to remember that we actually do have a neighboring saint. You know, it's it sometimes it's it is weird to me that one of our saints is just on the other side of the river, Correct. literally five miles from where we're recording this podcast right now is Saint John Neumann Newman, depending on. Whether Tom O'Shea would get upset if you said Neumann, <laughs> but <laughs> Bishop sure Sullivan would not. One. No, <laughs> but yeah, those uh, you know, it, it, making those pilgrimages to saints. I mean, it, it does. It is one, and that's a great thing to do on All Saints Day as well, is to go over and you know, yes, yeah. make a pilgrimage. Uh, make a Catherine pilgrimage. Drexel is right oh, at the cathedral true. too. That's what, yeah, there you go. That's yeah. right. There's two saints right two over saints. there. I, I forgot. Yeah. Do we have right. favorite shrines? Mm, I mean, I know mine, but what is your? I go there all the time. It's very peaceful. Mm, yeah. What about you? Mike? I've never been to St. John Newman. St. John Newman. Yeah, I, I was actually... You've never been? I, all the times I've, I've worked in Philly for years at the cathedral all the time, I couldn't figure out where it was. Oh, that's um, fine. And I, I did happen to be there, however, the day, just in a fluke, I was there the day St. Catherine Drexel was moved <gasps> to the cathedral. Wow. So I, I have been in the presence. Otherwise, the only other time... Well, I guess I was around a, a bunch of saints when I was in the Vatican, but... Um, Otherwise, when I saw Blessed Carlo Acutis' uh, mm. body at uh, in in Assisi, that was That's that awesome. was remarkable. That was a that was a remarkable experience. Wow. Yeah. I recommend it to everybody, and not just because the bakeries there are amazing, <laughs> and the cathedrals are incredible and stuff like that. And certainly seeing him there, and as well as um, Saint Francis of Assisi, uh, and the home of the Franciscan Order where it was created. It was that I, I have said this before, and I haven't said it in a while. I would retire to Assisi if I could. That, wow. That, that region of Italy was just so beautiful. If yeah. you if you want to make a trip that's really beautiful, go down to the St. Elizabeth and St. Shrine in oh, Emmitsburg, yes. Maryland. Mm. Gorgeous. And they have a, a recreation of Lourdes there, too, like a statue. Mm. And it's really beautiful, but then it's not too far from Gettysburg, PA. So you can, if you're a history buff, mm -hmm. can make a day trip or a weekend of it. You know, it's unfortunate. Is I've been to Gettysburg many, many times. I don't think I realized that the shrine was down there because I, I would have absolutely gone over It's there. about a half hour. Wow. So it's not that bad. Yeah, you just, it's south. Oh, yeah. I'll have to make a, I'll have to, next time I go to Gettysburg. See, for me, it'll be the other way around. I'll go to Gettysburg and I'll make a pilgrimage to <laughs> see the shrine. Well, that's kind of, I have family in Gettysburg, so I would stay with them. Mm -hmm. We'd do that and then we'd go, but it's just, Peaceful. The shrine yes. is peaceful to Elizabeth Ann Seaton. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, 
listen, thank you all. Thank you both, rather, for coming on the podcast and making up for the fact that you didn't record your own podcast mm-hmm. this month. We really appreciate that. Um, the We uh, should be the Patriot I thought you didn't notice, Mike. I'm so glad you keep bringing it up. I completely <laughs> noticed. I'm like, when are they going to record our podcast? The people people like your podcast. Uh, you know, so it, it's a good thing to have. I had a number. I mean, now you have competition because there is a... There's a Polish podcast that's starting soon. It was last week's uh, episode, and he's going to be all about Polish saints, so he's he's, he's getting in on your territory. <laughs> well, we'll stay away from the Polish saints. It'll be no problem. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, 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 yeah, we'll, yeah. The workaround. I wanna, I wanna, right. No, no. I want to see you guys fight it out. So uh, I want to see, see who ends up winning in the, in the, in the Actually, wars. I think we've done all the coolest Polish saints. John Paul II, oh. Maximilian Kolbe, Faustina, we've done them all, right? The, yeah. the host of that show, that is fighting words. <laughs> I'm right now. He's going to come after dun, you guys. Dun, dun. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, thank you both for coming on. We appreciate that. And thank to you. all of our listeners, thank you for checking us out. And don't forget to make sure you emphasize your saints and souls uh, to start the month of November. And we'll talk to everybody again next week. See you, everyone. <laughs>